<clears throat> I'm actually still working on the new player's guide. I just can't work on it at work. Because at work, it's, uh, it's always so busy that I actually can't even write. But uh, after the stream, I'll, I'll work, keep working on it. I have tomorrow off too. So, can do that. <clears throat> Alright, so let's try to get you out of C rank. And one of the things that I personally like to do is I try to, you know, if you, if you really want to, to get the, um, I don't know. I suppose what I was thinking is like, you know, legendaries and epics are really powerful in this game. That's true. But I try to find diamonds in the rough when it comes to like, you know, what's it called? Whatever these are. Uh, commons and uncommons. My bad. See, I'm not also bad with names. I'm also losing my mind. So there's that. So what I'm going to really do here, guys, for the next um, few minutes is I'm just going to go through every unit and just kind of talk about it a little bit. So Arkham is one of my favorite revenge units because when he comes back, he has four damage. There's not really another three drop that does that. And for now, we can put him in. But I, I'm not sure if he's going to stay in the final rendition. So a lot of what you're looking for is we actually already have a previous blueprint on what's a strong Dark Destruction Wesker. And I think that's zombies. I think zombies is the easiest plan, especially for budget. I have been seeing people play gates. They're really good against chicken, if you see them. The three mana, two five agility. Because it wins a trade, if, as long as they don't play any actions. Gate here, this one, he, he's really strong. Because he makes it to where you can make trades. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but once you see it, uh, it'll make sense. Essentially, when he grows, he can make his stats go up. So, effectively, if you time it right, you can block with him. And it'll kill the enemy unit, and they have to like stare down 6 damage. So he's always like high value as a 3 mana card. <clears throat> this vial, I don't think a lot of people agree with me. But this card is ridiculous in the sense that after it dies you get a 4-8 for only 2 mana. Now that's strong. I personally like G-Adult, but I don't know if it really fits with this deck. I think Gore is pretty good as a 2x. High max is way too expensive. Banner Snatch actually could be good for this current meta. 
Because he kills the enemy unit in front if it has like 4 health or less. And we can try to, to play with that. I think nobody does the same thing. Yeah, it does. I think we will have to look at actions pretty soon. Or like right now, actually. So you definitely want three Fate of the Unworthies if you're playing in C rank. Because it allows you to kill a lot of cards pretty quick. Very short and simple. Kill the card. It's clean. I'm thinking about doing Murderous Hand since we're playing the uh, Bandersnatch. Because it's Black's only way of dealing direct health damage. But honestly, you could just run murder Spikes. And then probably have the same effect. And then I do think that at least one direct kill card... ...is pretty warranted. I think we have enough... Nah, we play a lot of revenge. It'll, it'll take some time to get there. Maybe a couple self predations. And just one gore. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think the one gore is right. Because I don't really want to rely on him like that. Maybe the Agnes. There's a four cost Arkham. He might be okay to put in here. Yeah, we, we can put him in here. Nobody really plays him anymore, but we can do a 1x. Alright, so I'm gonna go into rank with this. Self predation to deny, you know, things that our opponent's doing. So if they're trying to kill one of our cards, we can gain seven life instead. It's also good against Denjin because we're healing. So it buys us time. Murder spikes. This card kills V, Mysterious One, but there's a lot of targets that have two attack or less, so it's just a kill spell. Then you got Arkham, he gets four attack when he comes back. You got Zombie, you know, gain one MP when it dies. Juni, gain one MP when it dies. Gate is just a well-costed three-cost card, so you make a lot of efficient trades with him. This gate, you kind of have to set up the play, so you kind of want to watch and see how I do it. And then you'll understand. Then you got Fate of the Unworthy kills a bunch of cards. You know, if it's 4 MP or less, it dies and you deal 1 damage to them. Vile, he's kind of like... In my opinion, he's one of the, the best cards in this budget deck. Because he can come back as a 4-8, which is really high stats for a 2-mana card. You got the Arkham. He kind of has like no business being here, but he does give some value. 
Banner Snatch will help us destroy stuff that we might come across. Because when he dies, he kills any card in front of it that has 4 HP or less. And then we have Gormagala, which is like a 1x. Because if we really want to, like if we have like a lot of MP, we could transform into this and then we gain 6 life. So it's kind of like a, a cheeky play that we could do. Just like a 1x. Might be okay. I run three of those Arkhams. I probably would run two. One or two. The reason why it's just not good is because you don't get immediate value. And it, it can be really slow. All it really does, you, does for you is it helps you kind of like you know, stick out the game a little bit more, but it's not immediate pressure. So Gate's one of my favorite cards to to open with when it comes to decks like this. I'm going to play the Gate here because I know he has a Detonate. And Detonate deals 6 damage. He has 7 life, so he'll live it. I was going to play this Gate first, this other one. But I decided not to. I'm going to go ahead and kill this Bat. Because he played the shield, so he's trying to protect it. And I just did not like that. At all. That's fine. He deals a 6, but it still has 1 life. I'm, I'm fine. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to block with Gate. And then we're going to play Juni. Because now when they both die, they'll give me 1 MP. This Gate in the middle, he normally does not have that ability. But he does give it here. Alright, so I'm actually going to take this hit bottom, because I want to time the gate trigger. See, he didn't block there. So that's good. Alright, now the gate is going to die and kill himself, because that's what he does. Let's see. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of mana here. I'm going to let bottom hit first. Got it. Transform. Kill Diablos. And yeah, we're, we're pretty far ahead now. I'm gonna use Gate to Ascend, because he has an ability called Ascension. And it just means that you get to kill one of your own cards and then play him instead. With bonus stuff. In situations like these, if I'm winning board, I never proactively play cards. Like, I have this kill card I can use at any time. But if this guy can already kill her, then why would I do that? Now, see, now I made it into the position where he's like, oh, you know, I want to play a card. Well, I'm going to punish him for it. So I made him use the active phase first. Because I don't have to do anything, you know. Like, I, I could push the pressure and be like, alright, yeah, I'm going to kill your guy. But then I would just be giving him mana. So it's better if they, they use their own mana to play their own cards instead of me just giving it to them. So that's why I don't play actions like that if I'm winning. Five minutes. Make them count. We got newbies. Welcome to Teppin, right? What's up, Ace of God? How you doing, man? I'm going to save Bandersnatch for for the possible V. And I'll just wait. Alright, I lied. I'll play the Arkham. Unfortunately, they're playing the, the super control deck. I don't know if I'm going to win it. But we'll, we'll see. I, I don't like to give up. Oh, they put it back in my deck. Cool. Who dat? Oh, Ace of God with the five gift subs. Yo. Ace of God. Thank you, man. I appreciate that a lot. That's some that's some real love. Thank you. I know there's a... Uh... You guys are awesome. Hey, we drew into the murder spikes. Now 
So if they play the V, I can kill it. I just gotta put pressure now. Uh, I can hide behind this murder spikes. So I can play aggressively. That's fine. We can play Arkham now, now that we have a, a unit that has revenge in the deck. So we'll drop him. And then if he dies, I get a new Arkham. You're doing fine. That's good. This guy's at 6 memory. So the magic number is for 0, and you can click on him to just like check how much memory he has. Is 10 and 15. When he has 10, that means that he can play the legendary 0. And when he's at 15, that means that he can play X Hunters. Which means you, you pretty much lose. But what I'm doing now is, because I drew into the murder spikes, I can hide behind this. And just like push out as much pressure as possible. So that's why I flood my board. And this guy, he's might, he's might, might be struggling to figure out a way out. But I'm okay with that. He's also trying to get an answer too. He's going to pop his hero art because he's at 10 now. See, that's what I was talking about with zero. And now we can play uh, Bandersnatch after this. I'm not really happy if he gains health, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to block with a gate. If I could. Trying to get this Bandersnatch, man. Not letting me. He's going all in on the zero. Is he going to actually use Rokoha here? He didn't. He used it after. We're, we're fine. Okay, I can finally kill that zero, but now he has another threat. Oh, we just die. Yeah, I can't stop that. So this is the example of where... <laughs> legendaries and epics are way too strong sometimes. I think purple takes advantage of it the most. At least historically it has been. You'll make a nice test, Sumdrak. Don't think I'll make this easy for you. Yeah, Teppen has a lot of um, stuff that you can do to gain like currency and whatnot to build stuff that you like. And that's like the Chronicles. I think Chronicles is one of the best ways to do it. There's a lot of rewards. We're playing against Jill. This is a matchup where I should be winning. I'm not going to play this Murder Spikes even though I can. I want them to start the action phase first. Hopefully they don't have a buff, we're going to go for it. If they have the buff, they... Yeah, they have the buff. So I got completely... teched up there. So the plan here is just to keep playing units until I hit, um, until I hit 20 AP so I can kill the Valstrax. That's the plan right now. 
Okay, should be able to do it here. There, it's dead. I'm surprised they let the Hellbat die like that. We have a chance. We won the board. That's really good news. We just keep playing cards. That's all we do. We can kill our own card here and gain 7 life. Because he's, he's already going to kill it, so let's just kill it ourselves. Yeah, winning board is probably one of the most important things of uh, Teppin. Once you get to champion rank, it, it starts to mean less of winning board. Because you have Denjin, then you have Zero Exodia. They don't, they don't care about winning board. They just focus on alternate win conditions. I do have to time this block perfectly though. There we go. I, I just die to that. Oh, I'll take it. I don't even know what his memory was at, but I'm not chancing that. We got him <laughs> by a hair. Or we can all play Ninjala when it comes out. Yeah, I'm down to play some Ninjala. Yeah, again, this is the deck. It's all about winning the early game. Yo, Solidus Pucci, thank you for the follow. And the best way to to really win is you saw me utilize like Dark Destruction. Really helps me win the trades and stuff. This card helps. I never use it proactively though. Unless it's a really high priority target, like if if the card is really aggressive, has agility, or has like combo, has a lot of damage output, then yeah, I'll kill it. But if it's a card that my units can already kill themselves, then I'll just use my, my units to kill them. I don't really worry about the actions killing. Unless that one time where he had Valstrax and I was like, yo, I have to use this murder spikes. And then we did. And we actually got punished for using this last game. But we still made out of it because what we did was we we ramped up to Dark Destruction. And what's nice about this package, the the zombie package, is 9 out of however many units we have, 9 of our 30 cards, they all give us back 1 MP after they die. And they have pretty decent stats to trade out. So that one MP getting back, that's, you know, a plus to your resource. You know, in games, in card games, resource is so important. So getting that one MP is really good. And then you have these revenge units that come back with bigger stats. You can't really go wrong. Don't new players get 10 tickets of each pack? They do not. So, this is why I've always said that Teppin, <laughs> um, Teppin is a game that rewards you a little bit more if, if you're a veteran player. Because what they do in Teppin is, also I think my game froze, so I'm going to have to restart. One second guys. My Teppin froze.
Anyways, so what Teppen does is if you are a current player, they give you like seven packs base, but they also give you um, like five more packs depending on their like online campaign. Teppen does a lot of online Twitter campaigns and normally you actually get all of them. I know that, you know, the last time we had zero, we got all of the tier rewards and then we even got more like they they gave us another Twitter campaign uh, in addition to what we had. So we probably got like, I don't know, 15 packs once the set dropped and that was for everybody. You didn't have to like participate or do anything, but you could. So every player that was playing Teppin when Zero came out got like 15 packs. Something like that. I'll play against Start Tank. In this case, I like to not swarm the board. I like to wait. Because generally what they do is they, they focus all in one lane. And I'd rather just keep feeding my resources in one lane. In this case, I'm going to play a zombie so I don't miss, miss my mana. Like, sitting on mana is generally like really bad. The reason why it's bad is because you know er as every second goes by you're gaining mana so you don't really want to waste it. Wow. This guy really texts me. He, he did some good moves. So bottom lane right now they were gonna trade even but now he buffed his unit so I'm gonna lose my unit first. Yeah he's he's going all in one lane like I was saying. It's because it's heart tank. Only the heart tank players do this. It's because of their hero art ability. And what I did was I played gate so I can replace my unit and help fight against this dude. Yep, all in. Heart tank is a all in hero art because it only focuses on one unit. I'll play banner snatch. Boom, killed it. If they respond with an action, I can use Murder Spike. Oh. Yeah. They played Karen and Hero Art of that, and I got Dark Destruction. Yeah, she gone. She gone. I'll just I'll just play more cards. This guy sure has a lot of seals. I'm surprised. Yeah, I never use murder spikes unless I have to. And it's way better, like, you see this? Because I waited patiently, he's about to try and put this back in his hand and gain 7 life. But now I respond with this, and now he gets nothing. It's, it's so much better to wait until your opponent me messes up. Like, start the phase. Because then you can respond. If you're, if you're winning board, never try to win more. Never try to, like, push too much resources. Also, if you're a new player joining to Teppin... New player resources are uh, bountiful, plentiful. When you do like chronicles and when you start the game, there's like a bunch of achievements. Like if you play X set amount of games, you keep gaining rewards. It does cap at a certain point and that's where I'm at. But it is, Teppin is a game where you could, you know, jump into it and build like one good deck and just keep investing um, time, I guess. Time in the same resources that you have. I'm not going to respond to this. I'm, I'm fine. If he wants to to keep putting resources in that Rashid, go for it. I'll just keep blocking it all day. Like, I could kill it right now. But I'd rather just keep blocking. I'm I'm fine. 
when he starts playing um, buff spells, that's when I care. I'm actually going to play this guy here. There we go. Now I have my, my guy. I'll play this here. That's fine. And we'll block here. And now I've killed this guy. See, he wasted all of that mana to play action spells. So now he's in a very bad spot. That's that's fine. That's what I was going for. So you saw how he just kept playing action on action and I just kept playing units. I was just like, go for it. Spend your resources. See, my units can already deal with all these cards. Actually, maybe I will kill this. To the point where I feel like they can't do it, that's when I start playing cards that destroy. Dang it, I missed. So, I tried to play the Arkham right back to back. And that would have given the other guy a lot more stuff. I guess I will kill this. Like, he's relying on these cards right now. That's fine. We'll try and get the zombie up top. Should be fine. Yep, he missed his, uh, his, he missed his drop. Most people don't get drops like that. That's why I knew it was safe. I'm just gonna sit back and chill for a bit. I'm gonna see if I can get him with the, um, the bait. Alright, so I'm gonna play this. He'll probably respond. And now I can kill the Valstrax. Keep killing his cards. Ooh, nice. He killed his own card in gain 9. One of the things that will help you as a Teppan player is visualizing, you know, how much MP your opponent has. So I'll give you some examples. So as a player, as somebody that's playing this game and I'm looking at, you know, the situation, I can tell you that Rathalos, this deck is red green. So that means that he only has five maximum mana. It can never go above five. So anytime he plays like a unit, then I know that he minus three mana. So he probably has either zero mana or two mana. It's, it's one or the other. So at the time that your opponent plays a unit, then you know that they wasted their, I guess you shouldn't say wasted their resources, but they spent their mana. That means that they can't really respond with much else. So that's when you can kind of like go for the offense, which that's what I did with the self-predation play back there. It, it's probably, if you're a new player, you probably won't see it. But that was the intention, like the reasoning behind it, you know, the deeper meaning, I, I guess, would be the best way to say it. I'm going to block. The other thing that I do is blocking last second. It's not always, you know, applicable to applicable to every situation. Also, I have to worry about this Valstrax. So I'm going to start playing cards that give me mana when they die. Because I need to get to, to 20 AP for that hero art to get rid of the Valstrax. 
Yeah, there's two of them now. Play this. There we go. I'm gonna kill my own banner snatch, and that's gonna kill his um his card right there. Shoot. He sealed it. This guy plays seals. This is not good. Alright, I need a plan. I'll kill bottom. Alright, nice. We got murder spikes, but I have to bait it out. He probably has another buff. I'm not going to mess with that. Because he didn't play a buff, and this deck is supposed to always have buffs. So I'll just wait. I'm going to block here. Nice. Kill it. He can't stop that. Shoot. Hopefully he doesn't get um, enough mana to block. Nice. Got him out. All right, we are alive, but barely. At this point, I'm really low on health. Shoot. All right, this works very well with Bandersnatch. Because as soon as he kills the Bandersnatch, the, the Cody dies with it. Yeah, so he messed up here. Banner Snatch kills cards that have, you know, four or less health in front of it. Oh, heck no. Oh, no, tell me he has seven. He has seven? Lame. Super lame. <laughs> he had seven exact. He drew that. Oh, man. But yeah, we're talking about Pax and Teppen. So you, you can do the Chronicles, this like single player tab on the bottom left, then you can do, ooh, they changed it. They changed how they look. This is a much cleaner and nicer interface. And you can do missions and get gold. You can also destroy your own cards, so you can get souls and make new cards. I'd only build decks that you want to build though, and as of right now, I'd probably wait until the next season, because we are getting new cards next month, save all your souls for that, you know, don't focus too much on trying to, you know, build the deck that you want right now, build it next month, because then you'll have two months of uh, lifetime to it, and decks and tap in, they always get better, so, you know, once you have this deck and a new card, set comes out you can just keep adding to it you don't have to be like oh this deck might die i mean sometimes it might but it's not all the time majority of decks stay in flow but there are transitions also if you're a new player when new players join the game at first they actually don't get any of the packs in between the sets. So you get a bunch of core. You also get basic cards for free. But you don't get Devil's uh, Day of Nightmares packs. You don't get Devil's Awaken packs. You don't get Four Seeker packs. But right now, if you join Teppin, you do get 10 packs of this or something. Or 7 of them. You get a portion of packs from the latest set. When you, when you start Teppin on a new account. 
So it is better to, you know, players that play Teppin do get more stuff as time goes on than a new player would. I don't know if I should change cards in this deck. I'll, I'll check it out again. Yeah, there's really nothing amazing in commons and uncommons for, for units anymore. Same deal with actions, probably. Yeah, I think what we got is pretty close to how we want it. Yeah. For a common to uncommon deck, this is probably what you the best you could do for a budget competitive deck for Dark Destruction. At least for my playstyle. Uh, I know everybody has different playstyles. Yeah, if you're a new player, um, feel free to message me on Discord. My name is Iowa Tag7175. What the? Okay. Audio went out. I was like, why did it go out? So this is Metsu Shoryuken. I know I haven't played a card yet, but you actually want to play cards ASAP. The reason being is because, you know, they're an aggressive deck, you want to be aggressive too. This is not good. I'm gonna start killing their cards. This is really not good. I think I just lost. I think I just straight up lose. Because I don't have a direct kill card for this at all. And this is gonna deal 8 damage every tick. Every 5 seconds. It's super fast. I'm gonna take 8. Watch. Boom, 8. Boom, another eight. Yeah, I can't do nothing. This is an example of how legendaries are too strong sometimes. Yo, what's up, I Harris? I feel like I read that I must I must have forgot to respond. Dieted, sure did. It's like you have an answer for everything. Yeah. That's the best way to, to win Teppin, is trying to have an answer for everything. But I think part of Teppin is to know like when to like pump the brakes. Like playing Teppin, a real stra uh, real time strategy card game. It feels a lot like, you know, knowing when to pump the brakes. Because, like, right now, I'm, I'm putting on the gas, right? I'm playing a unit. I'm contesting bottom, contesting mid now. And eventually, it's going to get crazy to a point where I'm just like, all right, now I, I need to just sit back and chill. This is actually where I'm pumping the brakes because I can't really do anything else. And I can use this uh, Fate of the Unworthy, but I'm going to wait until they waste, you know, their their action card on one of their current units, and then I kill it in response. Fully pure pure Throw down your and 
That's fine. See, I'm gonna play Bandersnatch in front. And as soon as that thing goes to one life, I'm gonna kill my own Bandersnatch and kill it w with it. Did I say one life? I meant to say four. As soon as this goes to four life, I'm killing my own Bandersnatch. I'm surprised he's not playing any resources. You see how I'm just like pumping the brakes? I'm waiting for him to do something. I'm fine. There's not really much going on. All right, now now I kill it. <laughs> you think you can stand against this god? That's fine. And we flood the board. And top is already going to kill this, so that's why I'm not using Dark Destruction. I'm waiting it for like, you see, he played that Chris Redfield. Now it's dead. That's what I was waiting for. You want to take out targets that, you know, they just played. Because it kind of emphasizes the, the what is it. Because had I used Dark Destruction on the top feline, the Chris Redfield would come out no matter what. And then I would still have to deal with the Chris Redfield and my opponent would have like a glimmer of hope. But when you let your units kill something like the top lane, and then you save that Dark Destruction for the bottom lane Chris Redfield, that's when they know that all hope is lost. And I hate to make it sound so grim like that, but... That's essentially how, you know, you try to have a battle of resources. Here I'm going hard because I have two gates and they're just really, they can be aggressive or defensive. In this case, they are offensive and I'm using them because the Morgan matchup, they are a, a deck where... They played that card. And you have to be aggressive. You have to be aggressive against um, their deck. I'm gonna die anyways because I don't think I actually have an answer to this Asenko. Well that's why you want to be aggressive. Like it's already what not even a minute and they're gonna be at 12 health. But the longer this game goes, you know, the more chances that there's going to be that I'm going to lose. And sometimes losing is just fine. Yeah, like you, you really cannot do anything here. But you see, uh, I did the best I could, and I got them to four health. Yeah, matchup knowledge is pretty important. It lets you figure out the best way to like carry yourself. Because like, for example, in the X game, when I was playing against uh, X from Mega Man X, I knew that he was playing Heart Tank, so I just like saved up all my resources and just kept playing in one single lane. But in some matchups, you're just like, oh, you know, I need to flood the board. I need to be aggressive. This is one of those times where I have to be aggressive. Because I know their play style. I lied. Well, I guess I didn't lie. This is exactly the play, play style I'm talking about, is they're playing control. 
So you want to be the aggressor and out aggress them. If you let time tick too far, they'll have amassed way too much resources to where, you know, they can deal with what you got, you know, appropriately. But if you keep playing cards, they will run out of, you know, ideas or, or cards to play. I'm going for the vial. Oh shoot, it's Jagras. So because they're purple, that means that they might have negates. So using this Fate of the Unworthy is even worse in this matchup because of negates. So like for example here, I'm going to kill this, see if he plays another card, and then we go for... Yeah, see now he can't even negate. Because he only has two mana left. I can see on the top right. I will still kill my own card. So I use the self predations to bait out whatever he was trying to do. And we did it. I'm not going to play anything mid because if I do, it'll feed the Jagras and I want the Jagras to die first. As soon as that Jagras dies, I'll start playing units. Okay, it's dead. I'm going to play this here. For an aggressive play. I'll play this mid. I'll kill bottom right now. Because that gate getting any bigger. It'll just feed him resources. Like when it dies it gets one mana. When it you know grows the second time. It gets uh, bonus stats. The card's a lot. Plenty ridiculous let me tell you. I think we can play Banner Snatch here. There's, there's no really particular reason. I could have played any card there and it would have been fine. Jagras is out again. So excited. Alright, I'll play this here. I gotta keep an eye on mid. Another thing about what's happened is you want to look at the attack lines. So I'm actually going to take the top of it, because I could block it here, but then it would make... Oh wait, yeah, never mind. I do want to block it, because I still have enough damage with gate. Okay, so we do want to block it. Nice, we got the block. Wait. Oh, he gains two health. I lied. I played that completely wrong. The right move was to not play anything. Oh, that's fine. We didn't really get punished that bad. Oh, we kill that. You don't want that getting any bigger. Shmo, you're back. How's Beppin been going? It's going alright. I noticed there was a lot of um, new viewers. So I was like, yo... And I'm uh, trying to give pointers to everybody. Yeah, if anybody has any questions or wants to get out of a certain rank, just let me know. I do think I might end the stream at some point, I just don't know when. I'm starting to feel a little fatigue or tired. But if there's one thing I'm passionate about, it's uh, playing Tuppen, I'll tell you that. 
Oh, he's trying to make copies. So this card, Possessing Malice, it makes copies of cards like Sigma. So I'm I'm good. I'm going to kill Sigma before it becomes a copy. Oh, shoot. He negated it. Choo. Excuse me. So anyways, now he has two Sigmas, which is a legendary card. He should only have one. But it's fine. We may or may not actually lose this game because of that that occurrence. Of course. Uh, not Sadus, thank you for the follow. Shoot. It's happening. He has two of these cards. We'll send it back. So he can infinitely play two cards now with, with Sigma. Yeah, see, he has two Sigmas now. I guess we could go for the timeout plan. I have to live for 40 seconds. But all of his cards have Heavy Pierce. So it's not even a point to me playing units in front. Yeah, I guess I, guess I cannot live at all. There's, there's no way. Yep. And this is an example of when epics and legendaries become too strong. But yeah, I think in C rank, this would do wonders. As long as you have like the right mindset. Because Dark Destruction Wesker is a lot similar to uh, Ryu. You know, traditional Ryu where he just like throws cards down and then kills all your stuff. It, Wesker is pretty much the same way. The difference between him and Wesker is that Wesker can, can flood more minions because of revenge. But he doesn't get a lot of face value like clear the board stuff like Ryu does. But they both have similar abilities when it comes to like, you know, Shinku Hadoken, Dark Destruction. They both target kill something. So Ryu really just relies on, you know, burning stuff with his on play abilities. Wesker's like, I'm gonna flood the board. Yeah, I'm trying to write all these uh, tips that I'm giving out on the stream into like a written form. And then that way, it'll help me probably do like YouTube videos. I still need to learn how to edit. Maybe I can do that tomorrow. If I have time. But yeah, I have a lot of budge decks. Like this bottom half of my deck list are all budget decks. I even have a budget Ouroboros deck. So this deck is all comes and uncommons. Uh, let's kind of check it out. Let's, let's see if, how this deck works. Because the deck with like epics and legendaries is all about, you know, bringing back big gigantic cards for cheap. This deck can do it too. It's just not as good. But the fact that I can still do it is pretty pretty decent I'll take it 
This is Metsu Shoryuken. I have two kill spells. I think this is a keepable hand because we know that they're aggressive and we have two kill spells in hand. We have the Murderous Spike and we also have the Fate of the Unworthy. So he played the Hellbat. I'm not panicking because it's not really high damage output. And I have the Gore in my hand. So I'm just going to wait it out so I can transform the Gore. I do want to play this Vile. Boom. Transformed. I'm going to do a bait. I'm going to play this. They'll probably respawn. And then I'm going to kill the Lucia. Yeah, you see, they, they buffed the Lucia. Now they have no mana. I'm going to use Murderous Spike to kill it. So now they just lost this legendary card that they played. And I use Self Predation as a bait to get me to that place in the first place. You know? It's kind of like Magic the Gathering, where you just like bait out something, wait for them to play a card, and then make them regret it immediately. So Teppan has a lot of that. This is one of those times where I actually don't have to worry again. So, I'm not gonna kill it. That's fine. I'm gonna throw a vial in front of it. He's really going in on this card. I'm gonna go ahead and kill it. Actually, I think we should put this card in the deck. I don't know why I didn't do that earlier. So that last deck that we built for Dark Destruction, it should be playing Destructive Instinct. Also, I'm going to gain 6 health here. Look at that. Yeah, not responding is fine too. Like, he played an action and I didn't do anything. The reason why I didn't do anything is because, you know, I feel like I can juice him out a little bit. When things get start getting, like, hairy, then we're just like, okay, now your card dies. But if my unit can kill this and it's not doing a lot of damage, then I'm fine. You know, I'll let you keep investing in this card, and when I feel like you invested too much, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to take it away from you. Oh, shoot. That's a card. That's a card, but we got out of it. All right, let's let's go change that deck that we had. This one. So this card was the one that I really was unsure of. And we take that out and then we add in this one, Destructive Instinct. So Destructive Instinct is kind of like the one all solve all. It kills an enemy unit but you take X damage where X equals to the enemy's attack there are better cards in legendary forms than this card and this card would have saved me in you know a couple of matchups had I just like had this card in my deck and draw into it it's a perfect counter in, in some cases also if you look at the art I always thought it was just wings but if you look at the bottom you'll notice that there's horns coming out like really big horns and that's actually Nergigante I thought it was just like, you know, wings that were all messed up. But it's actually Nergigante. His head is just like at the way bottom.
And if you feel like there are too many, you know, decks where they have cards that you can't deal with, then you can take out Gormagala and then add another one of these. But personally, yeah, I guess Destructive Instinct would be better than Gormagala. But I just like Gormagala. It's a lot of destruction cards. A little bit. Sometimes it's necessary. The right to be a god. That right. But really a lot of the um the murderous spikes plays. Those those usually help me win games a lot too. And also unit trading. Knowing when to to do stuff like that. Oh, let me at least show you guys the best uh, kill action spells that you can play that are epics or legendaries. So some of the best kill spells in this game are Obliterate. So that'll kill things like Hasenko, the one that I can deal with, or Valstrax maybe. Betrayal is another good one. A lot of people don't play this card anymore, but it's still relevant. They just don't play it. Because of probably Zero Rokoha. Or Dungeon Burn. Because they don't play units anymore. I mean, they do, but they don't. Rebels Memories, you could play this card as well. That's not bad.